series about all Chopin's music. Today we focus on the prelude number five, um, opus 28, in D major. This piece is peculiar, it's a little strange. For uh, music lovers, not musicians, it's even not understandable. I think very difficult to understand when we listen because it sounds chaotic. We don't really know what's going on. It's very fast. There's a lot of notes and there is no accompaniment. Two hands are playing like crazy and we don't understand at all. Ferdinand Hessig, Polish musicologist in his great book about Chopin writes, I mean he quotes many other musicologists as well. He writes that when it comes to the, this prelude in D major, there are many different opinions, but not about the quality of the music, because the quality of the music, all musicologists think equally that this is a, the highest level of music written, but about the character. For Mostly for foreign musicologists, the character is rather cheerful, happy, um, and... Um, for example, Hunaker likes that this is like a very charming happiness, freshness and uh, um, enjoying life. Leichtentritt thinks that this is like a very happy little fish in the aquarium or in water. But Polish musicologists think here uh, more like a inner un in quietness. Um, chaos and the battle and it's very funny because you know Polish people everywhere in Chopin's music they see everywhere battle they see Chopin suffering and patriotic and etc I'm Polish as well uh, but here in this video I'm laughing about it a little because here in this prelude it's a very um, very funny quarrel between foreign musicologists and Polish musicologists I myself will not go in deeply into the character of this music or into the I don't know battle patrioticism or anything like that. no let's let's if you want this please go to look my video about polonaises or about fantasy in F minor I think this is just music pure music and what's more this is music written by a composer who had a pressure of time who had to uh, finish all the 24 preludes but he because he had to um, um, give the money back that he borrowed from, from the banker to go to Mallorca. He was sick, he didn't have time, he was frustrated. Maybe this frustration is here, we don't know. But anyway, he just decided to write as short prelude as possible. Definitely he wanted to write an etude, like an etude, uh, a study for fingers. It is not easy to play. I spent well, more than one month to learn it. Not every day, but but every second or every third day I tried to practice this with more than one month until I could play because every hand is playing something else. I, I show you. That's why the camera today is like this because I want you to see what the hands has to do. Uh, have to do. I mean, so, okay, let's see the left hand alone now. Not at all. If you want to learn this prelude, if you've never played it before, I strongly recommend to learn every hand separately first. Memorize, practice, 
even one month if you need until this kind of playing this level of playing then slowly start to put them together there is i think there are other ways but for me doesn't work only this this way i could learn this frustrating piece right hand <laughs> This is here is quite a difficult moment. But anyway, we will talk about everything because now what I want to do I want is I want to make an analysis because this piece which lasts less than one minute has its own form, very deeply thought of, has a lot of sense and is simply genius. I show you now. Okay, so part A. Of course, it must be short because we have a short piece. It's not a long fantasy in F minor, uh, which lasts 15 minutes. This is 40 seconds and it's really short. Anyway, so this was part A. What is in this part A? We have the accompaniment on the left hand. And in the right hand, we can hear the battle, the battle, but it is the battle between the minor and major second. Why the second? Well, because you know. Because the preludes are based on seconds. So Chopin cannot decide which second to choose. Minor or major? Minor or major? And at the same time we have crescendo and diminuendo. So we go more loud and then more silent. Listen. Then we end in uh, the tonic, D major, because it doesn't start from the tonic. Uh, okay, so this is part A. Then part B. Part B sounds like this. Now, what is this? We have a very... Um, how to say, well-written phrases. We have like questions and answers. We have two voices here, which we can, we can hear them in two ways. And I want to show you both ways. The first way is like this. We have one person. Well, I, I call it persons to, just to make it easier to absorb. One person. Then the answer of the second person. The first person again, the second answer, and this is the end. So one person, then the other answers, and one person. I play it now, the first person louder, the second more silent, so that you can hear it, because it's not easy. I know. Okay, listen. Again, with a little stop between the, the persons. Okay, once again. Once again, and I tell you again where. The first one. The second one. The second. Okay, this is the first easier way to uh, to see two voices here. The second one is like this. The first the first voice is uh, in the bass, like more on the left side of the keyboard. The second is on the right side, and they talk. They have a conversation. Listen, the first one, and then the second one. The first one, the second, the first, the second, the first, the second. And 
this is more complicated but if you want you can try to uh, practice your brain and ear and to try to catch these two um, melodies here once again first second first second first second first second okay uh, then we have part C part C very difficult pianistically when we have jumps both hands are jumping first one you know it almost is like almost like in campanella well campanella is a little bit more difficult but in campanella on the other hand on the right hand is jumping here both hands are jumping because left hand also has these jumps look at this can you see yeah it's terrible it's a terrible moment okay and then the last we have the diminuendo here so we go uh, quiet more and more quiet and the last note in the right hand i think it's worth to tell you this is a minor the last one is minor because every time we have major and the last one is minor and after this minor part a starts again ha huh. so it makes sense Many pianists, they play differently this moment. Some of the pianists, they stop on this minor. Some play it more quiet. Some just go through it without thinking. Uh, it's very interesting to, uh, to see and, 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 and to listen to many different recordings to see what the pianist do. What does he do with this minor note at the end of part C? When we have these jumps. So it's here. <laughs> Part A again. Part B again. Part B is almost the same, except, and now focus, is in minor. So Chopin is changing the key. Like in the sonata. It's absolutely fantastic. It's like the recapitulation in such a small piece. How does it sound in minor? I will show you where it changes. Here is minor, so sad. And part C again, but in a different key again. And then the coda. The coda is very interesting. Listen to the coda. coda is based on the material taken from part A so it's almost like a rondo we can say as well but in, instead of battle between uh, seconds we have the melody of seconds going down so it means like the problem of battle is resolved at the end uh, so the minor second one okay that's enough now let's play i will play it for you in a slow tempo and i will tell you while playing where we are i want you to tr be able to find out yourself these uh, moments when you listen to recordings usually people play fast so that's why it's like an exercise for your brain but let's just listen to this Part A. Part B. Part C. Part A. Part B. Part Part C. Slower without talking. 
let's just try maybe i take a little breaks so that's very sl slow sh short between the parts <laughs> easy I know it's not easy um, but it's just an exercise for your brain of course um, this is the analysis so that's why we have to do it but when we listen to this music we don't have to uh, we don't have to think about it we can have fun by trying to figure out this this um, parts but we don't have to uh, we can also enjoy this chaos <laughs> or this little fish in the water or whatever we want but um, definitely this piece is mm, not a typical Chopin piece right but I wanted to show you that it's deeply thought of is a very well constructed and has a lot of sense even if it doesn't seem so when we listen to it for the first time thank you for watching and uh, you can watch it many times then maybe it will be easier also for you and see you again bye bye